Welcome to Gentle Yoga. My name is Catherine. Uh, today we're going to need a chair, um, a block, and a, a blanket. But we'll start on our backs. We're going to do a supported back bend. If you don't, I have a yoga blanket, but if you don't have it, you know, really any kind of fairly thick blanket would work. Um, we're going to support, we're going to create a roll and support the, the back of the head, the upper back, and the mid back. So you'll see um, my roll is about two feet long, about hmm, probably once compressed about three to four inches thick. Place it on your mat and you're gonna sit in front of it. Your rear is on the floor and then you're gonna lay on it like so, back of the head. Walk your feet about as wide as the mat and let your inner thighs rest on each other. And then arms open wide, like you're gonna give someone a hug. Big extension of the arms left and right. Soften your gaze or close your eyes and just check in. How are you? How are you doing? Notice the quality of your breath. What is the depth or length of your breath? Is there an aspect of your breath that feels easeful? Maybe exhale, maybe it's the inhale. And is there an aspect of your breath that maybe feels a little sticky. Maybe the inhale hail feels a little bit harder to draw in, or maybe, maybe it feels a little harder to exhale. It's not uncommon that one aspect of the breath might feel a little confined. And just notice that. And see if you can even the breath out. So the inhale and exhale are equal in length. Notice which areas of your body rise and fall as you inhale. See if you can initiate the inhale in your belly, inhaling into the belly, feel it expand, and then moving the expansion upward towards your collarbones at the top of the inhale, and then exhaling really seeing the chest and the belly down to the floor. Let's do three rounds of breath like that. Good, if you'd like to set an intention for your practice today, see if you can distill it down to one word like strength, creativity, peace. And take a deep breath in of your intention and then breathe your intention out for the entire planet. Good, put your eyes open. And roll to one side. Take your roll and come back onto your back. You want to take your roll and we're going to place the roll now behind the neck. Now, um, creating kind of a neck roll and then the back of your head is touching the floor. So you may need to make your neck roll thinner. Just want to support the natural curve of the neck and it's okay if you're kind of your chin's a little further away from your chest lots of space long back of the neck lovely gentle curve and then you're going to bring your feet together let your knees open wide come into reclined cobbler's pose supta baddha konasana and then bring your palms together in front of your heart and then 
just uh, below the knuckle of your thumb, there's like a big pad right here. I'd like you to use these little pads right here, place them around your third eye area. So just uh, between the eyes and just slightly above. And you're going to bring the palms together and place, placing those little thumb pads right there and help gently pull the tissue towards the top of the head, just a gentle pull. Let your elbows swing open. Lengthen your tailbone towards your heels if your low back feels tight. Soften the jaw, soften the tongue. And we'll do one more inhale of your intention for yourself. Exhale it out to the planet. Good, and then part your hands and spread the tissue of your forehead. So it's like you're parting from the center towards the temples. Let's do that a few times. Spreading the tissue from the center line of the forehead to the temples. Last one. And rub in the temples. Good, go ahead and roll to one side. Come on up to uh, Sukhasana, cross-legged position. Cross with your right ankle in front. And have your knees, um, if you tend to sit with your knees really wide, have your knees maybe a little closer together. On an exhale, we'll fold forward. Just stretching out the outer hips for a moment. Continue to pay attention to the length of the inhale and exhale. But inhale, come on up. You're gonna rotate your chest to the left and then bring your hands on either side of the knee, just in front and push your hands into the floor. This is called pushing the mountain, pushing the mountain. Your rear stays right where it is. You're just pushing into the floor. Two breaths. Good, and then come on up to sit. Drop your right ear to your right shoulder, rolling chin to chest, and then rolling the head to the left. And then we'll just roll our head in circles. Now, don't let your head fully go back, of course, if that doesn't feel good for your head. Just rolling in circles. Sit nice and tall next time. You roll your head off to the left, left ear to left shoulder, lift your sternum a little further away from your navel, bring your right fingertips to the floor, walk them away from you and press them into the floor as you draw the right shoulder blade onto the back. Soften the jaw, maybe even let it go slack. Keep the tilt of your head to the left, but look to the floor to your left. So your chin comes towards your left shoulder. Slow inhale, exhale completely. Good, head comes back through center. Cross your left ankle on top of your right and exhale, fold over, cross shins, tilting the front of your pelvis towards the floor best you can. You're always welcome to lift your hips up on a blanket if uh, you're feeling this like excessively in your low back. You want to, you'll feel it in your low back, but uh, you want to feel it in your hips and hamstrings.
last round of breath. And then inhale and come on up, push the mountain second side. Pushing down into the floor. Sending the breath into the left side of the trunk. Let your head just hang. It's a slight little bit of a twist, but also a slight rounding of the upper back. On your next inhale, come on back up. Drop your chin down to your chest and rolling right ear to right shoulder. Head back, left, and just big circles, nice slow circles to the right. Let the shoulders be loose, nice and easy circles. Next time you roll your head to the right, pause, head heavy, hanging to the right. Check that you're lifting your sternum really tall, but you'll get more out of the neck stretch if your chest is broad and your spine is long. Left fingertips come to the floor to the left and maybe walking them um, a little away from you to the left and maybe perhaps even a little back behind you as you draw the left shoulder blade, right shoulder blade on the back. Head stays heavy to the right. Soft jaw, soft tongue. Last round of breath. Good, and then head comes back through center. Keep your legs out in front of you. Let's see, um, and I'm gonna show you the side view, okay. Hands back behind you. Wag your knees side to side, windshield wipering them side to side. Now, next time knees go to the right, let the shin of your left, uh, your left shin be cradled by the bottom foot and sit up nice and tall. We're gonna move into sage variation. Walk the right hand back behind you and the left hand comes in front and uh, on top of the right thigh. So you're using it kind of like the lever. And then, rotating your heart and belly to the right, but you're gonna turn your head to the left. Looking over left shoulder, chin slightly towards throat. Just breathing some space into the right side body. This is a nice one um, to do in addition to connect some neck rolls for the neck. Just lengthening the side body can help out the neck. Good, come on back through center and do that windshield wipering of the knees side to side again. And then knees go left, second side. Walking left hand back behind you. Back of the right hand comes to the top of the left thigh. And then you're rotating your belly and your heart to the left as you turn your head to the right, looking at uh, over the right shoulder, chin slightly towards throat. And I'm sitting nice and tall if you can. Equal inhale to exhale. One more round of breath. Good, come on back through center, bring the soles of the feet together. 
Walk the hands back behind you, turn the fingertips out, spread the fingers nice and wide and bend your elbows, bend your elbows back behind you. Then lift your heart as you press the backs of the, uh, the shoulder blades, shoulder blades into your uh, upper back, like the back of your heart is helping open the chest and then gazing forward and slightly up. Think about the uh, curve of the neck, the back of the curve that we were trying to work on earlier, supporting that curve. Good. Now, if you can't put weight on your hands and knees, just come back to a cross-legged position. We're going to just kind of move our spine around. So you're going to just start to circle your spine around. Those of you who can't put hands on your uh, weight on your hands and knees, you're going to circle the spine around, kind of like you're jump roping the spine. Ribs go to the left, towards the ceiling, to the right, towards the floor. And then the head goes the opposite direction. So as you lift the ribs towards the sky, the head drops. As you circle ribs right, head goes left. You got the idea. Once you got it, go the other direction. Circle ribs now to the right. And then just going through some cat cow, lifting the hit, ribs toward the sky, drop your head and tail. And then ribs go down, lift head and tail. Once more, exhaling as you round, inhaling as you broaden your chest. Good, okay. Let's come on to our backs. Arms are gonna be alongside the body. Bring your right cheek to the mat. Walk your feet together. And without moving any other part of your body, slowly lift your right leg any amount. Just lift it right up. Draw your tummy in, try to stabilize the pelvis so it's not moving too much. And then slowly lift the left leg. Just keeping the leg straight so you can, uh, the leg's a little heavier. We wanna work on the glutes here. Lower the left leg. Turn your left cheek to the mat and do the same thing. Lifting right leg. Lower it. Lifting, straighten the left leg. Doesn't matter how high it is. And lower it. And then you can shimmy your hips a little bit. And then we're gonna do that again, but we're gonna add arms. We're gonna do some uh, swimming uh, locusts here. So right side of the face to the um, floor. On an inhale, lift your right leg, swing your left arm, rainbow it out to the left and forward. On the exhale, turn your head to the right, return your body to the floor. Inhale, left leg, right arm, rainbow out that right arm towards the side and forward. Exhale, right side of the face to the mat, return to the floor. Just like that, keep moving, opposite arm and opposite leg. Not so concerned about how high you're lifting or how fast you're going. Uh, in fact, I encourage you, to go small and go slow. Nice and slow with the breath. Keep those back legs straight as you lift them. Low belly's pulling in to support the low back. Do one more time on either side. Good, and then pause, relax. Bend the knees and wag the feet side to side. 
Just releasing any tension in the back, the glutes, the legs. Okay, take your time, come on up. We're going to come to stand and locate our chair. You're gonna place your chair on the mat, have the seat of the chair facing you. Uh, I do have uh, all four legs on the mat. So to begin, you can start facing your chair in mountain pose, Tadasana. And just taking a moment and noticing uh, where your feet are placed. Try to have your uh, toes and knees pointing the same direction generally. Outer edges of the feet parallel. Inhale and sweep your arms up overhead. Exhale, bend the elbows, broaden the chest, and try to bring your shoulder blades onto the back. If you're doing those goal post arms here, I'll face you while we do this. Inhale, reaching up towards the sky. Exhale, elbows bend. And it's almost like you're trying to press your, the top of your forearms to the wall back behind you. Inhale is the reach. Exhale, shoulder blades dig into the back of the heart. Hmm. <laughs> Few more times. Try to have a neutral pelvis. So neither tilting the pelvis excessively forward for a sway back or neither tucking your tailbone excessively. Good, and then release the arms alongside the body. Let's come into a warrior one lunge. You're gonna step your left foot back behind you and bend your right knee. Now, um, if you don't feel so steady on your feet, just get closer to the chair and you could, you could even just kind of have your fingertips on the chair if that's gonna help you better, okay? Um, if you're okay being uh, on your feet, you wanna have your back heel up. You're gonna keep your hands on your hips for a moment and then finding that neutral pelvis, right? So neither uh, tail tucked too much or too sway in the back, somewhere in between low bellies in. Those of you who are okay, uh, you're feeling okay balancing, you're gonna start to circle your left arm. Circling it nice and slow, circles. Go the other direction. Those of you holding the chair, you can still do this actually. You just have your fingertips on the back of the chair. Yeah. Good, and then next time you reach that left arm up, you'll pause there, big breath in. Exhale, both hands come to the seat of the chair. Pop your right foot, just maybe like a step back away from the chair if it's real close. And then you're gonna um, load uh, the weight of your body on your right foot. Now, your back leg, uh, can lift, or maybe the toes need to stay on the floor. That's totally fine. Basically, I want you to feel a warming sensation. I want you to feel your right hip working. And I want the back of your pelvis level. Like you could put a little, like you could put a block on the back of your pelvis and it would stay, it wouldn't fall off. You could do this at home if you want to, but I won't make you. Um, if you can lift your back leg straight, then do it. Um, We'll take a few breaths here, warming up that right hip. What is the quality of the breath now? Can you keep it as even as it was when we were laying down? Last breath. Good, and then lower that back foot. We'll come on up. Okay, both legs are gonna straighten now and my back foot, my toes turning out, we're gonna do a variation of Parshvo Tanasana. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, cactus the arms open. Good, let's do that twice more. Inhale, reaching the arms up. 
exhale, cactus the arms open. Really nice, flat upper back, okay? Now, from here, we're gonna tilt the trunk down. So uh, it's either on a diagonal towards the floor or maybe it's parallel to the floor. That's pretty intense. You don't have to do that. This is a dental class. But inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Strengthen both legs. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, flat upper back. Strong legs. Let's do that twice more. Feel the strength and the heat in that front leg. Warming up, warming is up. Good, and now release the hands to the chair and extending the hips away from the seat of the chair. Feel the stretch. I'd like you to try to reach your right glute, your right butt cheek as far from the chair as you can. So try to even almost like um, you're gonna try to press a button behind you with the right glute. You're gonna reach it further, further, further. Wrapping that outer right hip away from the uh, center line of the body. And in fact, we're gonna help it out. We are going to, I'll show you the other side. We're gonna take our right hand Dig your thumb into that crease where the leg plugs into the trunk. And you're gonna wrap that right, or out, right outer hip back. And so it's gonna, the stretch is gonna change. Um, hopefully uh, you're feeling a little bit more, maybe. Press the right foot into the floor and lift your right shoulder. Keep wrapping that outer right hip back. We've got two more breaths here. Now you're welcome to keep that right hand there or you could reach the right arm up if you like. Reach that right glute back behind you. Reach it, reach it, reach it. Good, and then chair dog. You're gonna both hands to the seat of the chair, step the feet back. Now your feet are underneath your hips as you drag your hips back behind you, reach them. Lots of length in the spine. Now if you've got uh, frozen shoulders, you can always just bring the elbow, elbows to the chair and the forearms can be parallel like that. And you could do downward dog like this. So we'll all take about two more breaths in our variation of dog. Okay, and then walk forward, mountain pose. Just noticing the left and right side of your body. Breathe your intention in for yourself. Breathe it out for the planet. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, cactus. Press those forearms back. Inhale, reach up. Exhale. Bend the elbows. Let's do that one more time. Chin slightly towards throat. Head moving back slightly. Good, and then release. Let's do what we did on the other side from the top. So. Right foot comes back behind you. Please be close to the chair if you need to be. We're gonna be in this warrior one lunge position. Glutes are engaged, hands to hips, heart lifted, head over heart. Okay, please hold on to the back of the chair if you need to. And then circle the right arm. Go the other direction. Next time the arm reaches up, we'll pause there. Big breath in. 
Exhale, hands to the chair. And press onto your left foot and slowly lift right leg. So you can bring your elbows or forearms to the chair if you need to. Maybe you're just up on your arms, but we're warming up the left leg. We're warming up the left hip. And again, you want to keep those hips level. Okay, whoa, my hips aren't level, are they? Let's see. So the thing that will try to happen potentially is that the right hip will want to go a little bit higher than the, the left. And by keeping them level, we're um, inviting a new range of motion into the hips that uh, potentially isn't, um, the hips aren't mobile in that way, but we're also warming up the, and strengthening the left hip. And when I'm saying, um, Typically, if we sit all day, we have a lot of sitting, there is a range of motion that is lost in the hips, this isolating, this ability to keep the hips level. And so that's what I'm, I'm not asking you to do anything that's unhealthy, but I'm asking you to invite the hips to move in a way that they're maybe don't get an opportunity to move. Good. And then step the right foot back. Come on up, right toes are turning out. We're doing this partial Asana variation. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bend the elbows. Shoulder blades move together. Inhale, reach. It's okay if the shoulders come up as you reach for this. And but exhale, see if you can bring them down and the shoulder blades together as you bend. A few more times. Last one. Okay, now we're gonna hinge from the hips. Feel the weight equally in both feet and then inhale, reach. Exhale, flat upper back as you bend the elbows. Try to keep your head in line with your shoulders. Keep moving. Ooh, let's do one more round. Good, and then hands to the chair, extending the hips back, feel a stretch. And then wrapping that outer left hip back behind you, reach that left glute back, back, back. Pressing through the left foot as you reach. And then we're gonna help wrap that outer left hip back by digging the thumb into where the leg plugs into the pelvis and then wrapping that hip back, pull the outer, the flesh of the outer hip back, pulling it back as you hinge forward. Now keep pulling it back slightly and lift the left shoulder. Pressing through the feet, particularly that left foot, press it down in the floor. If you wanna lift the left arm towards the sky, please do. And so just feeling in what feels breathable, what feels healthy. And then let's meet in chair dog. And in this chair dog, I invite you to slightly bend your knees a little bit if they're not already. It's, uh, and then drop the head. And then drawing the chin towards the chest and almost as if you're gonna try to look at your belly button. See if you could look at your navel. Feel your breath. 
Good release the head and then lift the head back so the ears are in line with the shoulders. Keep them there. And so you want your head in line with the shoulders, but I'd like you to just turn your head to look at your left bicep. And then slowly turn your head to look at your right bicep. Good, and then slowly walk forward. Come on up to stand. Mountain pose. Come back to your intention. Take a deep breath in, breathing the intention for yourself. Breathing it out for the planet, every being on this planet. One more round like that. Good, and now we will come to the floor. So you can move your chair off to the side. You might want to use your blanket for the, this next bit. Um, we're gonna do Jenny Shirshasana. So uh, some people, if you have really tight hamstrings, I encourage you to sit up on your blanket. You could just kind of fold it into a square. Yeah, just a little bit. Give your hips like a head start. Extend your left leg. Right sole of the foot to the inner thigh. So sitting nice and tall, you can grab the flesh of your bum and drag it back behind you, nice and tall. Inhale, reach for the sky. And before we come down into it, I'd like us to take a little twist to the left. So exhale, left hand to the left, just a little twist. Back of the right hand presses into the extended leg. Use it like a lever. Looking over left shoulder, one more breath in. One more breath out. And slowly untwist. One more inhale to reach up and then exhale, fold forward. Rest your hands maybe on um, the leg on either side. If you can uh, reach for the foot, go ahead and get it. Doesn't really matter where the hands land, but rather, um, are you able to tilt the front of your pelvis towards the floor? so that you have just a nice even kind of arch or rounding in the back, not excessively rounding in the, in the low back. And then you're going to place your left hand to the inside of your extended leg and reach your right arm over your right ear as you open up for a side bend here. I'm not facing the right way. Okay. Like this. Here we go. Lengthening the right side of the trunk. Good, and then inhale, come on up. Ardha Matsyandrasana, you'll bring your right foot to the outside of your extended leg. If your knees are feeling okay today, you could bend your bottom knee coming into this version. And now uh, inhale, reach both arms up, and then exhale, rotate heart and belly to the left as you twist. Right hand comes back behind you looking over right shoulder, maybe hugging that right knee. Good, on the next inhale, untwist. And maybe do a little counter twist if you like. Okay, same thing, second side. Now we're gonna extend the right leg. Oh, 
On your inhale, reach both arms up. Exhale, twist to the right. Bring the back of your left hand to the outside of your extended leg. Last breath in, last breath out. And then inhale, reach both arms up. Exhale, fold over right leg. So if you are resting your hands on the floor or you're resting your hands on your shin, um, keep reaching through that heel though. If you peel the toes back towards the kneecap, you'll uh, continue to stretch the calf muscle. As we breathe here for the next couple of breaths, see if you can maybe tilt the front of your pelvis a little bit more towards the floor, deepening the crease in the hips, the front of the hip. And then when your next inhale arrives, come on back up for uh, the side stretch. So I feel like I'm always facing the wrong direction, okay. Come on up and then we're gonna bring our right hand to the inside of the right leg, reach your left arm up. So we're lifting the left shoulder now, rotating the heart to the left. Last round of breath. Good, come on up. Bring the sole of your foot to the outside of the right leg. So this uh, version of Ardha Matsyandrasana is a good one if you have a sensitive right knee. Uh, if your right knee is feeling okay today, you could bend the bottom leg. Inhale, reach both arms up, and then exhale, twist to your left. You may hug that knee, maybe you bring that right arm to the outside of the knee. Keep the chest tall, uh, the chest broad and the spine tall as you turn your head to the left. I'm just noticing what is the quality of the exhale and the inhale. Good, on your next inhale, slowly end twist, maybe a little counter twist if you like that. And then let's come on to our backs. Preparing for bridge pose. Both knees bent. Walking the feet towards the rear. Arms alongside the body. Take a moment and draw your right shoulder blade flat underneath you. And then roll onto that shoulder and then draw the left shoulder blade flat underneath you. So now hopefully your chest feels pretty broad, your neck feels pretty long. Keep your gaze on the ceiling as you press your feet down to lift the hips. Grab the edges of your mat and maybe even walk the shoulder blades a little bit more together and then try to rip your mat apart underneath you with your arms. So you're pulling on that mat to help keep the shoulder blades together strong glutes as the thighs are parallel. 
And then even here, it doesn't matter how high you get, rather, are you breathing? Are you feeling a nice even stretch in the belly of both quads? It's right in the center. Are you feeling the engagement of the glutes? And is the entire sole of both feet on the floor? Take about two more breaths. And then release the hips down to the mat. Locate your block. And we're gonna lift the hips once more, slide the block on its lowest level underneath your pelvis. A couple books work well for this too. And then you're just gonna float the legs up overhead. Now, if the backs of your legs are still quite tight, it's okay if the legs aren't straight. You could maybe just kind of like let them hover. Basically, we just wanna get the blood out of the legs. We wanna move the energy, uh, reverse it towards the head. Just noticing what does this feel like in the feet and the legs? Maybe you can even feel the blood moving out of the feet and legs. And then pointing and flexing the foot. Point and flex, point and flex. Good, bend the knees, return the feet to the floor. Lift the hips up off the block and return your bum to the mat. Preparing for relaxation pose, you're gonna extend your legs and arms long on the mat. If your back's feeling particularly sensitive today, you could stuff a pillow under either knee. That sometimes can help relieve any uh, low back tension. And then just like we did before with a uh, bridge pose where we drew the shoulder blades underneath us, do that again, flatten them out. So you have a nice long neck and a nice curve in your uh, cervical spine. And then starting to wiggle the muscles of the face. Just making all kinds of faces, move your face in both directions, make it long. Maybe open the mouth really wide. Make it wide the face, stretch it wide, big smile, ear to ear. And then just kind of move the flesh of your face around a little bit more. And then relaxing the face completely, close your eyes. Relaxation pose, Shavasana.
If you can stay in relaxation pose longer and would like to, please do. If you need to move on with the rest of your day, start to wiggle your fingers and toes. And then take a big morning stretch, like you just woke up. Slowly drawing your knees into your chest. And rolling to one side. And come on up to a comfortable seat of your choice. We'll meet with our palms together in front of our heart. And once again, just check in, how are you? How are you doing? Noticing the quality of your breath. And if you were able to cultivate any benefit from this class today, I invite you to think of someone you'd like to dedicate your practice to. Imagine you could send the benefits of your practice to this special being wherever they are in their day. And we're going to gather up all the goodness on the inhale and we're going to send it out to them on the exhale as you're ready. Big breath in. Send it out. See them feeling good. Thank you for practicing today. Namaste.